Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Pathology Learning. I am Dr. Monica. So in today's class, we will be seeing about pathological calcification under the cell injury series. So calcium salts can be deposited abnormally in tissues and it is of two types. So first one is a dystrophic calcification and the second one is a metastatic calcification. So dystrophic calcification is the one in which uh, the uh, calcium uh, levels are normal in the body. But the calcium gets deposited in dead and degenerating tissues. Okay, The tissue is not normal but the calcium levels are normal in the body. While metastatic calcification is exact opposite of it wherein the tissue here will be normal but then the serum calcium will levels will be elevated. Okay, So, let us see the examples of each of this starting with dystrophic calcification. So, any dead tissue is present so like a parasite which is being dead. So, calcium will get accumulated around it like a tombstone. Okay, Same goes for a tuberculous lymph node also. So, we see caseous necrosis it is a necrotic tissue necrosis is cell death. So, it is a dead tissue. So, the entire lymph node can be uh, turned into a calcium which will appear like a stone also. Okay. So, grossly whenever we see calcium it will be uh, chalky white kind of deposits and it will be gritty to touch. So, that is how grossly calcium deposits are seen. Okay. So, uh, we can uh, t uh, tuberculous lymph node which can also be converted into a stone that is also an example of dystrophic calcification. Other than that we have damaged heart valves as in any rheumatic heart disease or any dis heart, heart valve valvular diseases. So, again there the valve will be stenosed because of chronic injury the calcium deposits will be present on these valves and that will further aggravate the injury. Okay, So, that again is an example of uh, dystrophic calcification. Atheroma in the previous video also we had seen uh, atherosclerosis in which the, the calcification happened in the intimal uh, layer wherein the cholesterol clefts were present. So, surrounding which the foamy macrophages were present along with the calcium was also present. So, that is example of dystrophic calcification. So, uh, monkey bug sclerosis I will uh, tell you what is that shortly and some more bodies and asbestos or ferruginous bodies all these are examples of dystrophic calcification. These are very very important MCQs ok. All of this has been asked as MCQs. So, do remember it. So, what is the special stain we use for calcium? So, calcium the most important stain we use is Vancosa stain which stains calcium black in color. Okay. So, the other stain which can be used is alizarin red as the name suggests calcium will stain red in color. Okay. So, these are again MCQs. Then other than that we also have calcium stain and on HND also normal hematoxin eosin stain also we can see calcium in which it appears bluish that is basophilic amorphous kind of a material. Okay. Basophilic amorphous kind of material will be seen. So, monkey bug sclerosis. Monkey bug sclerosis is nothing but calcium which is present on the media, media tunica media of the vessels. Okay. So, it is also called as monkey bug medial sclerosis. So, in the tunica media of the vessels of elderly women it happens as an age related change. So, calcification happens in this media. So, it is not of any significance it is just an age related change. So, that is one of the examples of dystrophic calcification. So, the second image is that of a damaged heart valve in which this valve is entirely stenosed okay? and all these are actually uh, calcium deposits only. Okay? So, these are gritty deposits which are damaging the heart valve. So, this again in, in RHD rheumat rheumatic heart disease. So, this is a, uh, here again we can see calcium deposits. So, this is third image is the image of a tuberculous lymph node which has entirely become this. So, this whitish area no, it is entirely become calcium. So, it is quite hard like a stone. So, this is an example of dystrophic calcification. So, the next example will be an asbestos body. It is also called as a ferruginous body. So, these are nothing but in the center we have this asbestos fiber. Okay, Asbestos fiber is present. Iron and calcium salts will surround this asbestos fiber. Okay. This asbestos body is again an example of dystrophic calcification. Since it contains iron, this can be stained with pearls Prussian blue and since it contains calcium, it can also be stained with Vancosa. So, the next most important example of dystrophic calcification is a samoma body. So, any kind of papillary tumors basically. So, in a papillae, we have a fibrovascular core in the center. Suppose that this has been cut off. 
so there will be necrosis to the tip of the papillae right so necrosis will happen in the cells which are present on the tip so these cells which undergo necrosis then will accumulate calcium around it in a lamellated kind of an appearance so these lamellated kind of calcium deposits are nothing but samoma bodies so these are char characteristically seen in any of the papillary tumors basically uh, some examples are papillary carcinoma of the ovary or a papillary carcinoma of a thyroid or a papillary meningioma so meningioma is another example this case is of an uh, meningioma the uh, picture okay so here we can see lots of samoma bodies so other examples of samoma bodies where it is present is somatostatinoma and mesothelioma mesothelioma again we have a papillary variant of mesothelioma there again you can see this samoma bodies so moving on to metastatic calcification so metastatic calcification i told it is seen in normal tissue here but increased serum calcium will be present right so let's see some of the important mcqs related to metastatic calcification so what is the most common organ wherein this calcium deposits so the first one will be lung alveoli okay lung alveoli is the most important organ wherein uh, this uh, most commonly calcium gets deposited so what are the other organs in which calcium gets deposited gastric mucosa kidney pulmonary veins and systemic arteries so all of this tissue will actually secrete acid so basically they are alkaline in nature they secrete acid so this alkaline nature somehow attracts calcium and calcium gets deposited in these tissues so the most common was lung alveoli okay so what is the first organ in which calcium gets deposited so the most common organ which is getting deposited will be a mitochondria okay so mitochondria is the first organ in which the calcium gets deposited except except in kidney wherein it is the basement membrane okay in kidney alone it is the basement membrane where the calcium starts depositing okay these are again very important mcqs and what is the most i told that serum uh, calcium is elevated in metastatic calcification right so what is the most common cause of this elevated serum calcium it is hyperparathyroidism so hyperparathyroidism parathyroidism parathyroid hormone pth we all know that it causes increased serum calcium levels right so hyperparathyroidism which is actually the most common cause of which will be a parathyroid adenoma so hyperparathyroidism is the most important cause of increased serum calcium and the most common cause of hyperparathyroidism will be a parathyroid adenoma okay so all of these are very very important mcqs okay so what are the examples of metastatic calcification so firstly whenever there is an increase in the parathormone secretion it will obviously lead to increase serum calcium level so when does this parathormone get increase mainly in hyperparathyroidism like it all was the most important and the most common cause of uh, hypercalcemia so most common cause of uh, hyperparathyroidism was parathyroid adenoma other than that we can also have parathyroid hyperplasia which can result in hypercalcemia so uh, also some of the tumors can secrete some protein called as parathormone related protein so we call it as pthrp so parathormone related protein so this ectopic production of the uh, pthrp by tumors will also result in hyper um, uh, hypercalcemia so what are these tumors most important tumor will be breast cancer and next to that we will have lung cancer so both these tumors are known to produce this ectopic um, uh, pth related protein so other than that where do we get hypercalcemia so whenever there is bone resorption so bone is the one which is having calcium so when this bone is getting resorbed uh, calcium will enter the uh, blood level blood okay so whenever there is when there will be bone resorption whenever the bone is being infiltrated by some tumor some skeletal metastasis had happened from some other tumor or there is a primary tumor of the bone itself like a multiple myeloma or a leukemia so that again will result in the bone resorption and then paget's disease in which there is an increase of the bone turnover so all of this condition will also result in hypercalcemia other than that we have certain vitamin d related disorders like sarcoidosis sarcoidosis is a granulomatous inflammation inflammatory disease in which we have non caseating naked granulomas okay so we'll see about it later just remember it is a granulomatous inflammatory condition so sarcoidosis in this the granulomas actually they produce vitamin d okay vitamin d producing granulomas are present in sarcoidosis other than that williams syndrome so williams syndrome is nothing but hypercalcemia of infancy that is a condition again it is related to vitamin d so in second 
hyperparathyroidism that is in renal failure in renal failure what happens there will be phosphate retention so phosphate retention is there that will in turn trigger the hyperparathyroidism so that is called as secondary hyperparathyroidism so that again because hyperparathyroidism is there it will increase the serum calcium levels so other examples like milk alkali syndrome are there so again all of these examples are important for metastatic calcification both the examples of dystrophic and metastatic calcifications are very important and do remember the somatomatous bodies example uh, this image i just wanted to highlight here uh, we have this something called as tetracycline double labeling index so this distance between the two is used for calculating the bone mineralization so this again has been asked as an mcq that is why i am telling here so tetracycline labeling index is used for detecting the bone mineralization so that's it for today's video so we saw about both the types of pathological calcification which was dystrophic calcification seen in dead and dying tissue which is in which the normal uh, serum calcium levels are seen while in metastatic calcification we saw it is the normal tissue in which calcium is deposited but here there is hypercalcemia in the blood okay so both the examples are very important and some of our bodies do see the image based questions related to these thank you i hope you like my content if you like my content consider subscribing and sharing it to your friends who might also benefit from my video thank you